Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Knit Knack Chat Knitting Podcast. This is episode eight, and I am your host, Zach Anderson. Um, I am coming you, to you from my college apartment um, in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, yeah, today is Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. It's the second day of August, and I can't believe it's August. Er, oh my god, October. Can't believe it's October. Uh, October 2nd, 2021. Um, it's absolutely wonderful outside today. It is really sunny, and it's really crisp, and I'm so excited for it to become fall, and for me to be able to put my sweaters on and walk around campus with them on. Um, I'm really excited. Um, it's been about three weeks since my last episode. Um, and yeah, I have quite a bit of progress. I have uh, quite a few finished objects, um, so many whips, um, a, few, a few future cast-ons that we're going to talk about today, acquisitions, and actually I have a request for you guys as well, um, which I'll jump right on into. Um, so I, where did it go? Where, oh, there it is. Okay. Um, I designed a pattern and I want some people to test knit it. Um, I have a few versions of the pattern that I need test knit. So yeah, so here it is. It's a hat pattern. Um, this is a brioche hat with a garter, um, garter stitch brim. I am calling this the Ridges and Valleys hat. Um, so this version is more of like a, like a, um, like a, not a beanie, the other version, like a fisherman, fisherman's hat style. Um, so it comes in two sizes. In the description below, I will post a forum, a Google forum for like a testnet call if anybody is interested in um, testing this for me. Um, it is a super simple um, hat, garter stitch, um, and brioche. Brioche in the round two color is honestly the best way to learn brioche. So if, you're, if it's your first time doing brioche, this is a great way to practice and learn and like figure out the rhythm of brioche. Um, so that's pretty much it. I knit this as my gauge swatch for my newspa newspaper pullover um, by Hohi Locatelli, which I will show you guys in the whip section. Um, I knit this, the two colors are Muse 2320 Mockingbird, which is an 8020 sock yarn. My main color, which you can see in the brioche as the green is um, Grandpa's Garden. And then the brown, which is the secondary color, which is the back, um, is um, black walnut. So you can use any fingering weight yarn. There's a lot of lot more detail discussed in the forum and on the my pattern that I will send out um, after I get my testers collected. Um, a lot more details about yarn that you can use and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's that. It's the first thing to get started with the podcast is a, I might become a small objects designer. Probably not. This will probably be the only pattern I ever designed, but it was really fun and easy. It's a really good way to learn brioche. So there's that. Um, next, I'll go into my other my other hat that I have finished. This is my second Musselberg hat. Um, this is a, another DK Musselberg. And I'm actually really in love with this hat. Um, I knit this, let me just, I think I probably would wear it more as a beanie. Oh my gosh, my hair. Um, this is knit out of vintage. Barocco Vintage DK. I knit, I knit this on a US 7, um, 
like I did my other hat. This was also more of a swatch for another pattern that I'll be using this similar yarn for, on, which calls for US 7, so I was just like, hmm, I wonder if I can get gauge, and I got gauge. So eventually I will be starting that pattern, but not just yet. Um, so yeah, this is just a simple, one of the simple blue colors. I can't remember what the color number is. Here's my Musselberg. Y'all have seen a Musselberg. I submitted this for the um, We Share Needles and Crafted Pearl Show Us Your Muscles cow. Um, I'm really excited. I really hope to make a lot more of these hats. Um, I may make some of these hats um, as gifts for professors for when I graduate. Um, so yeah, that's that. Super simple hat. Super pretty. It's really, really cozy. So yeah, there's that. Those are my two hats. And You've seen, I think it was the last two podcasts, you guys have seen that I've been doing some sweater test knits, and they're both finally done. Um, one sweater is currently out and available, and the other is not yet. So let's first start with the sweater that is currently out. Neither of these sweaters have been blocked yet, because I don't have my blocking mats at school, but I should be getting my blocking mats um, in a week, in about a week or so. So they will be blocked and re-photographed later. So first is, da, 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 da. this is my Elm Street hoodie, which is a cropped, cropped hoodie designed by Chase Harpole. Um, they released this a few weeks ago, I think. Um, so yeah, this is my version of it. I knit it in um, Holst Garn Coast, um, held double. Main color is lead, green, mangrove, and then the purple is a uh, cat cat uh, cassis cassius color. Um, I'm gonna put this on real quick and show you guys. It is cropped, but I'm not gonna take my shirt off to show you guys that it's cropped. This is my first time knitting a hooded pattern. And honest, I honestly don't love how it feels with the hood up. So I would probably just wear it with the hood down at all times. Because I don't think the shoulders are... I don't think I shaped my shoulders correctly. To have it feel super comfortable. Oh well. I mean it's fine. It's just like the hood looks kind of weird and I feel like it needs a little bit more shaping. Don't mind my ends. But yeah, I really like this. Again, it hasn't been blocked, so I don't know how it'll soften. So it's a, still a bit, bit grabby. But yeah, it's a super cute sweater and I can't wait to like wear it. I'll probably end up, I probably won't wear it a lot. I probably will just end up be wearing it once it gets like in the spring or like the summer when it gets chilly because it's cropped. So I have plenty of the main color left where I honestly could go back in and pick up in the middle and make it a full length sweater, which is something I've considered. But we will find out. Where's that sweater? Super fun knit. Um, I totally recommend that you guys go and purchase this pattern and knit it up. Um, I am in the test knit gallery. I have a few of my modifications for the sleeves on there. Yeah. There's that. This is the new Elm Street hoodie by Chase Harpole. Okay. And my next, my last finished object, and probably I think my favorite out of everything that I finished. This, again, ends aren't cut and it's not blocked yet. Um, this is, oh my god, this looks so pretty on camera. This is my um, Oxonian sweater by um, by Vincent of Bydell's. Um, I knit this in Bydell's um, Yak Sock, um, Meredith, no, the bottom is Meredith Gray, 
blue, the, the blue section, this blue color is Harry's suit, and this one is Abador's waters, I believe. So yeah, I am so happy with this test knit and how it turned out. Um, I opted, there's an option in the pattern that Vincent writes about that you can knit a short sleeve version. So I just looked up like short sleeve Henleys to figure out like the sleeve length that most short sleeve Henleys are, are and um, it's like 13 inches from like the collar to like the end of the hem. So I did that. All of my notes um, for how I made the adjustment. This looks really bulky with a shirt on underneath, whatever. Um, all the adjustments I made for a short sleeve version is on my Ravelry page. And um, yeah, this is so fun. I have like two full skeins of this color left of my Meredith Grey left. So like doing the short sleeve version saved me two skeins. And now I have two full skeins of yarn to like make socks with. And I really wanna make socks with his yak sock. Or maybe I'll make something else. Maybe I'll make another fingery night sweater. I don't know yet. I have quite a bit of this blue left as well and of this like, this top color. Um, I really loved the construction of the neckline. It was super fun to do. Um, yeah, this was a really fun pattern. It took a while, but I totally would make another one. So, yeah. So those are all my finished objects. Um, yeah. I'm so happy to have both of these sweater test knits off my angels so I can do some, cause I have a few, I, well, I currently have one sweater and one t-shirt on my needles right now that are for myself. And then I'll be putting a sweater for my brother's fiance on my needles. Her birthday is in December, a few weeks before mine. And that sweater isn't gonna take long because I've knit it before. So I'll be knitting her a cozy classic raglan um, as well. So I'll be making my third cozy classic raglan probably in November. I'll probably start that in the beginning of November um, so that I can have that done for her for her birthday. Um, yeah. And then I have a, yeah, yeah, okay. Let's go on to whips. First, let's talk about this t-shirt that I have on my needles right now. Wow. I believe you guys saw this last time. Oh yeah, you did. It was like literally at the ribbing the last time and I honestly could have finished it. If I like put my mind to it, I could have had this done, but I didn't want to finish it because I wanted to have progress for you guys. I wanted to like show you progress because I tend to just like finish stuff, which is fine, but I still think it's funny. Oh, you can really tell. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so this is my Me Oh My Tea by Park Williams. <laughs> this, I am making this out of, I don't need to cover my face. I am, oh my, that's kind of really bad. But actually I think it's really cute. Okay, sorry, keep getting distracted. This is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed Dapple, which is a wool cotton blend. Um. This is all knit in the same color. This is all um, anchor. So here, so I currently have one skein left. This is anchor, Brooklyn Tweed Dapple. Whoop. Um, have these two balls that I had separated in order to do the front and back panels at the same time. I like doing things at the same time because then I don't have to go back and like take decent, like I don't, I wouldn't have to t go back and take notes on like what I did, especially when it's like knit, 
knit them the same or do things at the same time and then one thing is different versus the other. So I, from the last time you saw, I was at the ribbing and I knit the entire body and then I knit around and I did the um, arm, arm the armhole shaping. And now I just do, I'm supposed just to knit the front and back panels for like, back panel knits to like nine and a, I, never mind, I won't say. Na the back panel knits longer than the front panel. Um, but also you can clearly tell that it's like kind of striped. <laughs> These are all the same dye lot. And I honestly didn't think that they would be this different, but I also really like it. I really like the, um, the color block. So I'm not upset with it. But when I first noticed it, I was like, oh, whoopsies. That's really cute. Um, and I'm really excited for this. I'll probably be putting this on hold for a bit. Um, just cause Stephen West MCAL is happening and all that, all that fun stuff is happening in a bit. And I, I mean, I will wear this in the winter cause it's really, it's this really cozy yarn and I really am in love with it. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see how busy I get and what I decide to cast on or cast off. So yeah, there's that. And I, uh, I have this in my French Supply Co. I bought this bag when French Supply Co. was going out of business. Um, I've shown this on the podcast before. It says, bury me with yarn and needles and I shall rest in peace. And I have a whole bunch of buttons. Um, these two are from, oh, a whole bunch of buttons. Sleep, sip, stitch. Equality is greater than division. Um, darn it anyway. This is Mr. Machine. And then this is Eat, Sleep, Knit. I can't remember where I got this pen. I may have gotten this one at um, Knitting from the Heart. So yeah, there's that whip. It's super fun. I haven't touched it in a while. Um, yeah, no shame, but it's there. Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, my next sweater is honestly, I'm so happy I cast this on and it is such a fun pattern. So I'll show you the yarn that I'm using right now. So these are the two yarns I'm using. This Obviously, they're both Muse 2320 yarn. Um, this is the Mockingbird Base 8020 sock, um, 8020 merino nylon, superwash. This is Octopus Ink, which is this really pretty tonal black blue. It show it's actually more of a true like like a deep deep blue. And then this is Eggshell. And then there's some speckles of. I'll be able to show you better on the pattern, but there are some like specks. It's like a, it's like a bird's, like a bird's eggshell. So in this bag, oh, I have this stored in my cornflower bag that I got from Nomadic Yarns. It's really pretty. In this bag, I have a fully brioche sweater. This is the newspaper pullover by Hohi Locatelli. And oh my lanta, this sweater is absolutely phenomenal. You can kind of see little blips of color in the white sections. I am so in love with this sweater right now. Um, I am dating this for the Hohe Fall knit along. Um, I have separated for the sleeves. And I knit, I knit through the third color change. So I'm currently on the uh, Octopus Ink main body right now. Um, and I wanted to get my sleeves started. Um, just cause I wanted, I, just cause I wanted to. So I got my sleeves started. I got one increase in and I have six more to go. 
this is such a fun pattern. I I love brioche and honestly looking at it on my needles I'm like oh this looks really small but it's really nice. Um, I'm knitting the size medium on the recommended needles. Um, yeah I I'm really enjoying this knit and I'm enjoying all the chatter that's happening on the um, fall on the knit along knit along thread. Um, and there are just so many lovely other versions of the newspaper that are showing up on that thread and just so many other sweaters. And it's so encouraging just to like read these messages from these ladies. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, this is like my main sweater focus at the moment. Um, it's honestly gotten to a point where I don't need really need the pattern in order to, <laughs> where I don't need the pattern to, um, knit on it, which is really exciting. Um, cause I got through all the yoke increases and the yoke increases are super intuitive. Um, I do not have the needles I need for my ribbing, which I do all afterwards. So I need to get needles to do the ribbing still. Um, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm really loving this knit and I'm super excited to wear it and there's that. Next, I have a gift, a gift knit that I'm knitting for my best friend. Ooh, these look so pretty on camera. <gasps> I'm obsessed. I kind of hope these really fit her. I don't know, they seem a little thick. But um, these, this is the uh, So Summer Shorts pattern by Jessie May Designs. I had these started last time, but I don't think I ever showed you guys the progress of it because I think I like just had the eye cord done. So, yeah. These pants are so fun. Um, I am using um, Kobasi by Haiku. Kawasi by Haiku. Oh my gosh. This lighting is really bad. I'm sorry. Um, this is a cotton bamboo elastic, elast elastic and silk blend. Um, this is color 033. Um, I'm currently on my third ball of it and I have that one skein left. And I am working on the leg working on the legs right now. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying this pattern and I really wanna make it for myself after I do this for her. Um, I'll probably give this to her for her birthday or for Christmas, I'm not sure yet. But yeah, there's that. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, I think I've said it's a lot of fun for a lot of these projects, but it's really nice to have these varieties all this variety of projects in my life and and, or, and like able to change things up. So my next whip, um, I didn't show you guys at all this last time, but I was working on this last time too. Um, this is a, um, it's not something I usually would, would like think of knitting, but this is a knitted poof. This is the knit poof pattern by Joanne Lowe. Um, the pattern is on Ravelry, but it's, but the pattern is like on a separate website. Um, so yeah, I am, it's like a 10 section short row poof that you knit and then sew together. I am knitting with um, KFI collection macrame that I bought at Muse. I currently don't have enough to finish it at all. Um, and I need to contact Sarah and ask when she is going to be knitting or getting more of it. Um, cause I really want to make it all one color, but if I have to make it striped, I want to start, start the stripe now. Cause I'm two panel, two out of 10 panels in super fun. 
I can't really knit on this a lot because that's a really thick, really thick yarn on big needles. It makes my hands hurt, but it is fun. I am really enjoying it so far, so. Or maybe if anything, yeah, it's take, it's also taken me like barely, barely enough to finish one section. So I was like, ugh. If I probably, I'm knitting this up a needle size, and if I was knitting it down a needle size, I probably would be able to get one section per like cone, because they come in these like cones. It's like 200 grams of yarn for like 50 yards. And I was like, oh my gosh. But it'll be really pretty when it's done. I currently have this stored in my natural wax drawstring from French Supply Co that I bought when they were going out of sale. But it probably won't stay in here for much longer. I probably won't be knitting on this until I for sure have enough of the macrame cord to knit on it. So there's that. Oh, I'm so excited for this project. This project, this next project is a lot of fun and I really love working on this. This, um, ooh, this looks so pretty on camera. This is my star blanket. This, well, this is part of my star blanket. I just finished the center last Sunday, so it took me three weeks, three week, three Sundays. I've only been working on this project on Sundays, um, and it's taken me three Sundays to finish the star pattern. So yeah, I've been pulling out of my bin randomly um, to see what um, color I should use. Um, I am curious what your guys' thoughts are. Um, should I, so if you haven't seen the Star Flanket or the Star Flake Shawl pattern by Stephen West, um, the next few sections, there's, I have a few options. I could either do two colors for the entire next section or cause it alternates different stitch patterns. So like the stockinette section, garter, stockinette, garter, stockinette, garter. I could either alternate for every single one, or I could just have a stockinette color and a garter color. So let me know in the comments below if I should um, pick two colors out randomly from my um, bag. This bag has all the colors that I've already used, um, just so I have them out of the way, but they're still part of the project. So should I randomly select two two colors that are in here and knit with those the entire time or should I switch every single time? I really wanna switch every single time, so I probably might do that anyway. Um, but yeah, it's been a fun pattern to do. I did it, I started it once before but I never finished it and I'm really excited to be doing this. It's not technically scrappy but it's mismatched and it's no, it's kind of out of my comfort zone. So there's that. That's gonna be a long-term project for sure. Um, I have another blanket I have to start, probably, I'll probably have to start it in December for my brother and his fiance who are getting married in February. They got engaged a few months ago. They're 19. I'm not upset that they're getting engaged and married, but I'm still like, you guys are 19. Calm down, whatever, whatever. But I'll be, I'm knitting, I'm gonna be knitting them a blanket as a wedding gift because I want to, because I'm a good brother like that. Um, and that's the same, it's the same brother and fiance that I'll be knitting a sweater for, so. Next, I have a pair of socks in my Oh So Classic Dobby Sock Sack that I got last year from Area 51 Fibers when I bought their um, Advent sock. I'm so excited to be getting another Christmas striped sock this year. Um, I'm getting Freckled Whimsies um, Christmas sock this year. Um, I don't know when that's coming, but it should be coming soon. 
ish, I think, maybe in November. It'll probably come in November. But in this sock sack, oh my gosh, these colors. I have a pair of socks for myself. This, um, this color, these are just vanilla socks. Um, I am retesting my just current favorite pattern for socks. So this is a 68 stitch um, sock with a rounded toe. I think I did the Judy's Magic Loop cast on and I did like a rounded toe version. Um, then I knit and then I did the Shadow Wrap heel by um, Earth Tones Girl. This colorway is by Two Sisters. Two Sisters Yarn Co. Which I had, oh my God, stop it. Which I had been um, brought to the attention of by uh, the Naughty Nitwits um, over on YouTube. They have a podcast, they've been doing it forever. And I love watching those two ladies, they're so funny. Um, but they showed off this yarn company and I said, I need, I need some self striping in my life. So I got some. This is the chocolate rainbow colorway. I have finished, I, only, I actually only thought the repeat was this, was like to this brown stripe, but it's actually to this brown stripe because there's this like green, blue, green and blue section. So I have like one and a third repeats and then I did my heel it only, I accidentally ordered one skein, like I had like, I didn't think it would come with like a mini, but it came with a mini. It came with this brown mini, which luckily was where I needed to place my heel. But I had also ordered this like chocolate, the chocolate brown mini, which I'm using as my toes, which is perfect because that's the start of my color repeat. So it like fades perfect, like it fits perfectly with um, the pattern, the striking repeat, which I'm really excited for. Um, I had split these cakes in half and I think this is the smaller cake. Yeah, so this cake is slightly smaller than this one because when I split them, I wanted to make sure that one cake, that they both started at the same repeat because I want them to be matching. Just because I wanted to see how they would look as matching socks. So when I'm gonna be knitting until this cake is done and I'll be doing my ribbing in the striping pattern because I don't wanna have to worry about having a contrast. I don't think it's too much of a hassle to be doing a contrast. Um, yeah, that's fun testing some new things out with socks, um, just cause I can. I do like my 72 stitch socks, but I wanna see how I feel about um, the 68. And if I don't love, and if I like the 68 more, I may end up going down to a size zero for my socks. Um, and doing a 72, 72 stitch on a size zero. But that's just ridiculous. I don't know about that. I'm sorry that this lighting is really bad. I'm really, I'm filming this early in the morning and the only decent lighting is in front of this window. So those are all my whips that I have currently on my needles. Um, I am waiting oh so, oh so impatiently for my West Knits and Mikal yarn to come in the mail. Um, I got notified that it is in the process of being shipped and it I think it's either currently in the air or it's in Amsterdam still um, but I had ordered yarn from Stephen and Penelope in September um, I was able to snag one of their sets that came with all of the goodies um, so I'm really excited about that um, to come it's really out of my comfort zone the colors that I picked I picked these a green palette from Ching Fibers, um, which I'm super excited to try. Um, and yeah, so I probably will just be doing like a little unboxing on my Instagram. 
for that. I really hated that I was over there, I'm sorry. I'll probably just be doing an unboxing on my Instagram once that package arrives. Um, and then I'll be starting the MCAL with everybody else on the 8th. Um, and I'm super excited for it. Um, and then I have my brother's fiance's cozy classic raglan that I talked about starting. So that'll happen soon. And that's it pretty much for future, like future, future cast ons. Um, I have a few sweaters that I want to cast on for myself. Um, but I probably won't cast any other sweaters on until after the Hohe Fall Cow. So yeah. Or whenever I finish my newspaper pullover. Whenever I finish that, I will put something else on my needles, sweater-wise. Um, so, uh, the two winners of the Socks and Stocks Cal um, got their packages, and I'm really happy that they both love the yarn that they got. Um, the same At the same time that I um, was placing, getting their yarn to them, I ordered my own sock tail. Um, I'd been seeing this sock tail in the store for oh so long and I wanted to buy it so bad. Um, this is the old fashioned sock tail version. Um, so this is based off of Sarah's dad's favorite drink. Um, so I'm thinking I wanna make a the Coffee Talk socks by Tracy Miller out of this. Um, I think it'd look really pretty. Um, and I think I probably want to try that pair, that sock pattern on nine inch circulars because I think the pat like the stitch pattern starts like with purl stitches or something. So that's just a thought I've had. But who knows? I don't know yet. So yeah, there's that. It's really the only acquisition acquisition I really have. Um, but in that same package that I got my sock tail kit. I also had gotten my yarn for my newspaper, which I, I was also hoping to get my West Knits um, yarn in the mail at the same time so that I could record a podcast and then have it uploaded around this time again with showing my MCAL stuff, but that didn't happen. Um, I have so many future purchases that I want. Um, I want to, so firstly, Muse2320 just announced that she is doing a um, Christmas countdown calendar. So you have your option between a 12 day, cal 12 day countdown or a 24 day countdown plus a full skein. Both I think have full skeins, but one is 12 minis and the other is 24 minis. I really want to purchase that. I really want to purchase that. So I think I might do that. Um, I just finished watching um, Johnny Bo Dye's video. I think he posted it earlier this week. Um, he was just getting back into the flow of dyeing yarn and he dyed this amazing colorway. Nobody dare cart snag me, cart snatch me with his worsted weight yarn because apparently his worsted weight doesn't sell but he dyed the most wonderful color inspired by Little Shop of Horrors on Worsted. And I found this new designer that I that designed a Worsted Weights um, shawl and I want to make that shawl out of that yarn so bad. So um, yeah, I might be purchasing that yarn soon. And then I also, um, and waiting oh so impatiently for November to come around for the Sapphire Birthstone um, collection to be released by Hugh Loco. Um, so I plan on doing that purchase as well. Um, so yeah, there's that. There are so many things that I have planned. So many busy things are happening in October for me. Um, next week I have a choir concert. It's like a 50th anniversary for one of our professors who's been teaching for 50 years and is finally retiring. Um, so we have a huge alumni choir coming and a huge concert planned for that. Um, and then the week after that I have a opera scenes performance, opera scenes rehearsals. We're doing scenes from Gilbert 
and Sullivan operas. Um, that's the second week, that's the third week in October. And then the next weekend, I'll be working a show choir show. Um, my university has a show choir and they, for their fall performance, they have their um, fall show is the third weekend of October, I think, or it's the fourth. So either, either it's concert, show, break, another show, or it's concert, show, show, and then I have a break near the end of the month. But we'll see. It's going to be a super busy month. I'm super excited. Um, and also, I started watching um, Eric. I can't remember his last name, or if he says his last name at all in his podcast. He's a Canadian knit, knit male knitter that I am absolutely in love with. Um, I've been chatting with him a little bit on Instagram, and I love his content. He he has like my dream life, honestly, of like being able to buy sweater quantities all the time. Um, but I think I will get there eventually. I don't need to worry about that right now. Um, but I've been talking to Eric, and apparently he had posted recently on Instagram that he'll be doing like a cable knit along. And I really want to make a like cabled sweater vest um, for like either like performance, like recitals or like just to like wear with some button ups as like performance pieces. So I want to also make sure I have stuff to wear for my senior recital in the spring. Um, like have like a knitted like cabled vest. So I'm thinking I, I'll try to find a cable vest pattern to do that. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's everything I have to show for you guys today. Um, yeah, it has been so awesome catching up with you guys. Um, please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this episode, what you guys want to see in the future. Um, do you guys want to see a um, Vlogmas um, in December? Um, I am pretty open to do that. I only have, I think I only have like two, I think I have three weeks of school in the beginning of December and then I'll be on break. Um, my birthday is in the middle of December. Um, it's like a week before Christmas, which kind of sucks, but whatever, it's in my life. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking of doing a Vlogmas. I won't be doing a Vlogtober, um, obviously, because it's just super busy in October, but I think I'm going to do a Vlogmas because my semester will be wrapping up, so I'll have a lot of time on my hands to like either knit or just like talk about stuff. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think, what you guys want to know. Um, check the link for my Google form for my test knit. Um, and yeah. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day um, or night whenever you decide to watch this and I will see you guys probably in a few weeks, uh, probably in a month, probably at the beginning of November with stuff. So keep a watch on my Instagram for updates on the MCAL and other things that I'm working on in my life. Thank you guys so much again. Have a wonderful day. Bye.